Hi, this is Chris, and um, in this segment of training for the PhotoFX award making software, I'm going to review the PhotoFX software and the basic tools that will most commonly be used. Hi, this is Chris, and I'm going to be conducting the next segment of training for the um, award making template software and the Chroma Crystal software package. Um, this segment we're going to cover the basic tools for the software itself that you'll be, be, be using most commonly and to show you how easy they are to use and a few little tips and tricks to make your project making much easier. Okay, um, I've opened the new lead software already and um, every time you're going to make a uh, plate, crystal, award, piece of jewelry, um, you're going to be starting a project, and the project icons are on the left side of the screen. Okay, um, here we have project. I'm going to click the project screen. Um, the next part is we need to find our templates to create this project, and that can be located in a file directory. So I'm then going to go up to the top and go to the file directory. Um, now I have some from when I had the screen open earlier. I have some icons here some different templates. We're not going to use those right now. What we're going to do is we're going to go to my crystal templates, which I've installed in previous um, training videos, and here are all of my various crystal templates. And um, I'm just scrolling through them a little bit just to give you a flavor of what we got. Um, I'm going to do the basic rectangle one, which is one of the most more popular pieces actually, so we'll start with something simple. And I just double clicked it, and here I got my work area. Okay, um, you'll notice on this screen, just to give you an overview of the various sections, your tools get activated here, okay, and then, they'll get, then they'll also be across the top once you select one. Across the bottom are little thumbnails, and if you're working on multiple projects, you'll see each project on the bottom. Whenever you're calling in graphics or images, it's done from the right-hand side, okay? Um, so a few things to know when working with the templates. Um, as soon as you load the template, it is active and it is ready for you to tell it where you're going to get the image. Okay. Um, be mindful when you're working with the templates. Um, the I look at my mouse cursor here. Okay, it's going to move and change its its um, its image as it moves from different section to different section. This is become going to become important because if you click in an area of the screen when it's not ready or you're you don't want to be there if you click it you're going to deactivate an area that you want to work in for instance I'm outside the template here and I'm going to click just here on this white border okay now what I've done is, is I've the the image now has gone to the whole background okay I've lost control of the template itself I want to be inside the template here you see that okay if I click outside the template area, I'm going to replace the image, but I'm going to block up the whole template. Okay, So the template, this is a margin that goes around the template, and that's part of the project. Okay, If I click outside the template, I'm going to go to the whole outside part, and I don't want that. Here's the template area I want to be in. Okay, All right. So um, we're going to add a photo to this, do something simple. Okay, Right here is the key, little icon at the bottom of every single template and you place your little four finger mouse cursor here and we're going to click it once with the left mouse button and it gives us some options most will probably be doing replace the image from a file it's, it's asking you right here where is the picture if you have a scanner hooked up you can go to your scanner if you have a digital camera hooked up you can go to your digital camera most times you'll be replacing from a file um, so we hit replace from file once again, from prior use of the program, this is not where my photos are. Okay, It just went to the last point that I left off the last time I used the software. So I'm going to go to where my pictures are. And I'm going to click this folder up here, Currently Browse Folder. I'm going to click this little icon and say Browse for Folders. And I'm going to tell it where my pictures are. Okay, In this particular case, in previous videos, as you know, when we set up the program, um, we put everything into the Cassie QLT folder on our desktop just to make things easier and the project photo folder was right there okay and here we have our folders our photos excuse me now 
if you're using a digital camera, which is probably the second most common source for the photos, you're probably using a memory card. And in that particular case, when you go to browse, you're going to go looking for wherever drive on your computer the memory stick or chip is located on. Okay? All right. So, this little replace from file. Okay, where's the picture? Okay, we have different options here. And simply going to scroll through some of these pictures and pick one that suits the image best. Let's just start with this basic image of these three girls here. Okay. Um, if you don't like that, if you're working with different projects, before you deactivate this area here, you could put in other pictures and replace them just to see what works best. Okay. Um, let's do the doggies on this particular one. All right. So the dogs are, are loaded, and immediately you see these handles right here. These handles here are important. These handles allow you to resize the photo. Okay? Um, if you can't get, if you look in the upper right and upper left corner, the handles might be a little difficult to get to. You see this hand here? This gives me control of the picture and allows me to move it. So if I left click my mouse and grab it, I can grab this picture and move it to the template. Okay? So I'm going to bring it down just a little bit so that I can grab this corner handle here. When the cursor becomes a diagonal arrow with a hand holding it, I can make the, the image bigger or smaller. Okay. One of the things you have to watch out for is in trying to grab the handles is that you inadvertently click outside of the image area okay, quite by accident. Um, let me make this a little bit smaller to give you an idea. So let's say you went to, to click this and you accidentally hit it and you hit outside the button. Now you can't resize the picture. Okay? So you, um, you need to be, be leery of when you do that. Usually when you do that, what you really need to do is you need to replace the image again and start to give you control again. Okay? So let's take this piece here and we're going to resize this image to fit this particular piece. Okay. Um, obviously you could also make the image larger if you wanted. Okay. Make the dogs in there, which we can do here. Okay. When you're done and you like the way it looks, just simply click outside the image area and it's all locked in. You see across the top the item number of the piece of crystal you're making and the dimensions. Um, so that's the basics of bringing in a picture. The next common tool that you'll be using is to simply add text. To add text, you'll see on the left side here there's a text box. Click text. And you see that's going to activate some uh, selections across the top. Or if you hover over the text button, you get those same, those same options here. In this case, we're going to add text. Simple as that. We're going to type our, our text, which is going to be rusty and dusty. All right? And um, that's the text, as simple as that. Um, select the font that you want the text to be. Okay, we're going to go Arial Black. I could, ch I could do different colors, obviously, that the text is going to be. In this particular case, I'm going to do a gradient instead of a solid color. And I can just load it up and I'll do uh, this sunrise kind of look here. Okay, and see this options button here? Right here, you have to be leery here. You want to be paying attention because sometimes you're going to be entering new text and sometimes you're going to update the selected text and I'll show you what you have to look out for. I'm going to hit apply and rusty and dusty are here and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, let's say I want to edit that. I did rusty and dusty and I said, oh, uh, I want to spell out the word and. So I'm going to do and. Okay. You see this area here, I was just telling about options. If I hit apply now, I'm going to enter text new again. See, I'm going to do this for you here. See, I just added it again. That's not what I wanted to do. What I want to do is update the selected text. So I selected the text here, update, and hit end. Okay? Apply. And now we have rusty and dusty. And now I'm going to resize this. And once again, you have to get to the right part of the, the corner, the handles. And I think this is a little hard to see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a shadow. To do shadows, which is another common um, tool that you will use, simply on the top click shadow. 
add the shadow. Okay, and the shadow comes behind it. There's a few different settings on the shadow. The first setting, I'm going to move this up to the center area so you can see. The first area that you could um, adjust the shadow is how deep the shadow is from the piece. So grab that little handle, um, moves it, offsets it from the actual text itself. Okay. The next part is the distance and the, um, the opacity of it. So here we can have um, the visibility of the shadow can be affected here. Um, and this is the amount of blending to make it soft if you want to get a nice 3D effect. Okay. So here we have rusty and dusty. In this particular case, though, I think a, a more solid black is going to do better, so I'm going to leave it kind of on the solid black side. So that's, that's the basics of entering text. Just click off to, to lose the focus of the, of the, the text itself. And um, maybe you're ready to go here. Um, the next thing I want to show you is how to transform this text because sometimes you may want the text to run up and down the side of the piece or diagonally or in some particular angle. So to do that, the next most common feature utilized is to simply um, transform the text, which is to change the size of the orientation, which you see this button up here, transform. And let's say I want to run it up the left side here, rusty and dusty. That's a... Uh, from where I'm at now, that's a 90 degree turn, okay? Um, and I'm going to click turn. There you go. And now we got rusty and dusty. Now, for design purposes, this would probably look best if um, this was a little bit bigger and longer. Running up the side there, that would probably look a little bit better. Maybe not quite too much. I think rusty's getting a little blocked. But now I just inadvertently stretched it more than I wanted to. I'm saying Control Z to. to yeah, here we go. So that looks better. Rusty and dusty. Um, if you want to free, free, freely move this yourself, okay, just click the freely rotate button, and you can grab this piece, and you will be able to turn it. Oops. Like this. And by the way, I'm glad I just made that little boo-boo because that's an example again of, of watching where you're grabbing elements with the cursor, with the mouse, excuse me, um, because it has an impact as to what, what you're focused on and what the effect's going to be. So I'm just going to hit Control Z and undo that and put Rusty and Dusty back on the side. Okay. Um, so this piece is essentially ready. Um, the, the last feature that is most commonly used is an adjustment of the color. And um, this is going to be dependent from printer to printer, but um, to adjust the color, we're going to click on Adjust, and we're going to go to Lighting. When I say adjust the color, I'm really talking more about the, the lighting, actually, um, so that you get a nice, good saturation on your crystal. Um, <clears throat> you're going to get some previews on the side as to the various looks that you're going to achieve. Um, most often, the first lighting preference is the one that is set up best for making crystal. But there's a few things you should be um, cautious of, and that is oversaturating. If you see Rusty here has nice black fur, and you can see the grains of the fur. When you darken, and I'm going to click this darken now, you'll see that I lost a fair amount of detail in his um, fur. Okay, it looks just like a giant black spot. So what you want to do is when you're adjusting the color, you want to, um, and you'll come to know pretty soon that some pictures you just can't go any further beyond. Like this lighting 5 is actually a little bit better because I've, I've contrasted it nicely, but I still have the detail in the fur. So basically, really what I'm saying is leave it alone or use 1 and 5 for the most part. Those are, those, those are the most commonly used um, um, features to get the best color picture, okay, or adjustments to make. Um, lastly, you're going to go to print. Now, um, just hover over the print button here. You have a few options. One is if you're going to do a normal print, okay, if this is the only piece you're doing, I'm going to click normal, and um, okay, this, um, you'll see here's the eight and a half inch, eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper, and here is the piece. Now, this is a small little piece. One of the things that you can do is 
is um, you can move where this is going to print. This is going to print right in the middle of the paper. But if I grab this and move it to the front, okay, it's going to print on the leading edge of the paper, which means I could cut this in half, okay, and utilize this piece again, okay. This would make it. This would be able to get two two pieces out of this one particular piece. Um, if you're doing multiple pieces, um, when you go to print, you could hit tiled, okay, and you could schedule more on the sheet, okay. Um, depending on the piece you're making, if you go horizontal, uh, you might get more pieces, or you go vertical. It all depends. What you want to be leery of is not. Um, putting so many on a sheet that it's stuck, because it'll automatically start to change the size of the pictures. Now, I got nine on a sheet, which is great, but none of these are going to fit on the piece of crystal I was making, because it, it compensated for the squeezing the pictures on. Just so happens for this piece, four fits perfect. Okay? Um, those, those are the basic features that you're going to use, which is open a template, locate the photo, add some text, Add a shadow to the text, rotate the text, adjust the colors, and you don't have to adjust the color every time. It's just when you see the opportunity, if there's not a lot of solid black in there and you want to punch it up a little bit, that's when you go for it. Um, and then to do the basic printing operations. So those are the introductory tools to using the photo effects software. And um, in subsequent training sessions, we'll go over more advanced features. Thank you.